And this is, anybody know the name of this kata? Goho. Goho no kata. We're going to do goho, but we're not going to do it with the bow. <laughs> <laughs> Where we're going to start isn't goho initially. We're going to have a jab and a cross punch coming at us. And we're going to shield with a sort of rolling parry. Fade back, roll with this parry. I'm going to bring it up to defend, but I'm going to move with it. All right? One, two, and then from there, can I shoot this in to make a little space? Can I shift my body in and make some space? One more time. Back, hit, roll this way. Questions on that? That's where we're going to start, but we're not going to end there, and we're going to move quickly through that. Right? Easy enough? Yes, All right, so now we're going to start the kata. Got this jab and this cross. We're fading back. We're moving in here. We're going to hit. So we're going to begin with this low strike. We're going to throw a lateral shin kick. This is something we do in our beginning level toshin do practice. But I want you to bring it back. Right? We're going to one, two. I'm going to throw this strike, but don't like collapse into it. Once you hit, press yourself, accelerate yourself back off of that end of this position. Back, hit, low, ha. Right? Back. Hit, low, high. And one more time, back, hit. We're gonna disrupt and wanna set him back so there's not a lot of weight on the leg. Then these kicks hurt. If he's leaning forward and I kick him, it doesn't hurt as much. Right. Bring this back and then could be here, could be here, could even be here. But we're gonna start that sequence with this low, high hit from the right. So Anju was talking about some of the confusion around the Ninjutsu history. And um, there, was, you know, there was him as a source of information, but there was other like questionable sources of information that were still pretty popular. Right? Uh, ninja movie that you enjoyed in the 80s that wasn't totally accurate. Anybody remember any? Ninja Scroll. Ninja Scroll, all right. That was a cartoon that was 90s. In the 80s. Ninja 3, the Domination. Ninja 3, the Domination. That's a great one. Not what I'm looking for. Right? <laughs> but that was a great one. Pray for death. That's good. That's last strong. Dragon. Last dragon. Which movie? Which movie did the guy use a special technique that he learned from his shidoshi when he he broke the bottom brick? Bloodsport, right? Bloodsport, right? Bloodsport. Everybody watched it and they're like, "Man, I'm gonna be a ninja because I want to do what that guy did." And I'm glad you wound up here. I'm glad you wound up here. But that guy had this technique. It's called the dim mock, right? The death touch. And we've. We've learned that uh, you know, some things are, are better in movies, right? Mm -hmm. But if there is a real death touch, let me show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got this jab and I'm shielding and I'm hitting and I'm disrupting here and I'm setting this up, right? Right here. Oh, yeah. You have the left hook to the body right here. It's the dim mock. What am I hitting? Lever. Get down. Bend your knees. Use your taijutsu and use some taisabaki. Boom! Right? Whole body movement into there. A concentric ring of spasm that radiates through your body and makes you collapse to that side and fall sort of comically slow. Right? If you don't believe me, look on YouTube. <laughs> right? Questions on that? Yes, All right, let's work on that shot. Fudo King could be probably a vertical fist, could angle it so that it's sort of diagonal, but I wouldn't come out real far with it totally flat. Bend your knees, a little toby, sort of around the corner. Here, and think of that boho kata once I hit, how I'm like doing that side switch, that little side pivot. Can I get that little side pivot? as I'm moving around to access that dart. This jab. I'm thinking one thing that could be wrong, Kama, is you're, you're leaving yourself vulnerable, right? If I drop this hand yeah. and sort of pull it back here, if I timing's off and he wings this left, right? I don't want to trade with it. So could I use my Kama, like my Doko, here to stay covered? As I kick, you, you probably get a little more power if you kick this hand back. But again, like, I'm risking him winging that shot and it clipping me there. So I keep those hands up as you bring it back. As I throw this shot, I probably could throw this arm back. But again, I'm leaving myself 
vulnerable, so could I do like this sort of Ushiro Doko reverse position. When you're dropping in this punch, this is where everybody does it. They pull this hand back here, and they throw this in. And it's gonna hurt, but could you stay covered? Could you use a Hoko and stay in that as you move? Make sense? So be precise about where you're keeping yourself covered. Ms. Hayes was describing a comma as a fortress. Stay inside your fortress here. So with the bow, I'm hitting his foot, hitting his head, coming around to this low strike here, faking up something high, and then boom, dropping back down with that hit to the ankle. So the hit low. Jab comes in. And I'm shifting, I'm staying covered. Shot. Hit. I'm gonna get a little fake, a little something to get his attention high. Next dim mock. The calf. I'm gonna kick your foot out. Yeah. MMA, again, has provided a laboratory, right? A well-funded laboratory, and the guinea pigs in that laboratory are some of the most conditioned, highly paid, experienced, highly skilled athletes on the planet. And what they've recently discovered is that kick to the calf is more debilitating than the kick to the thigh. We've been kicking thighs forever. Thighs hurt. But there's something about catching that kick to the back of the calf that makes your foot not work anymore. And you'll see it. You'll see people step back and they get that wobble leg. Right? They can't push. They don't have a base. Right? So we've got two really cool targets, two cool dim mock opportunity. Everybody shadow box it with me. And jab comes in. Stay in comma. This shield here. Shoot this in. Stay covered. All right, here's where we begin our kata. Low, high, low, disrupt, low. Kick doesn't have to be a takedown, could be a kick and disengage. We talk about breaking contact and getting away. I think you've got a fair chance of that in this situation, right? I think you've got a fair chance to get away from somebody if they can't come after you because their foot doesn't work. Any questions right now? Sir. How do you recommend receiving that calf kick? Uh, with a partner that you trust to not get, be overzealous. <laughs> right? yeah. Keep your weight on your, a little more on your toes, a little more on the, I don't know, uh, Master Russo one time described putting it uh, a quarter on the front of your heel right? and having that, and that's been a great little visualization for me. If I get too heavy on my heels, a lot of times your foot will grab, especially in rubber tabi. On these mats, your foot can grab. So a little weight on your forward on your foot, you can let it slide. Don't uh, don't like brace for impact. Maybe let maybe let it go. Maybe you can practice like letting go and pico and keeping your tamai as well. After that liver shot fainting high, like we really had to put a, a lot into that to get them back, to get the leg around. Yeah, I think you give them, you give them a good push, okay. right? Uh, a real attack towards the face, something to, to get a real response. Because what we want when we're kicking the legs is an unweighted leg, right? You, you potentially could kick somebody and, and hurt their knee if they've got their weight on it, but they're way more likely to be able to lean into it and sort of ground out and take that shot versus getting somebody back. So I'd recommend preceding your kicks with some sort of disruption that's gonna get somebody faded back. And a lot of times it's just gonna be something like a push or something uh, high towards the face. Repetition is gonna be what builds the skill, right? Builds the timing and allows you to develop the attributes that you wanna be able to use to use these effectively. So one thing we use in our dojo here are these sort of we, we call them like Thai style pads. You've seen you know, people training with these forearm style pads. And these are great because you can have punches coming at you. And the s secondary benefit that not everybody sees is that if you're in Mr. Brett's position, you get real used to these things coming at you and you learn how to cover. You build some reflexes. I've gotten in trouble with some of my teachers they're, when they're attacking you. Know, I put my hands up like, to not get hit in the face and I'm not trying to mess anything up. It's like I've held pads a lot. <laughs> yeah, somebody got a little wild and my hand shot up. So it's a, it's a benefit of you, for you to be the uh, target holder on this. We'll have this jab and this hook coming at us. We're going to shift in and I'm going to give him this lead. 
And then we can catch, we could do this high kick like this. Probably better today to roll it. We can stick it on your butt like that. And I'm going to kick it. I'm not going to kill him, but I'm going to get this foot back. Then this one comes up, we're going to give it a shot. And then he's going to X him up. He wants to X him here, and I'm going to come in down. So bend those knees, come in underneath that. A little push. So I set this left leg for my kick back. And so we've got this jab and this roll. Back, hit, hit, push for the space, kick. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. I didn't finish my coffee. That's all right. <laughs> And when you build up a trust and a relationship with your partner, you can start smoking these pads. Right? You can start building some conditioning, some endurance, some power, the ability to move quickly and keep yourself in your kamai and develop a real sense of timing that's not just sort of slow motion. We've got a bunch of these targets. We've got a bunch of people. What I'd suggest is we get in groups of three and for two minutes, see if we can run through it. Actually, Given the time, let's play patty cake with our hands, right? And we'll take this back to your dojo. We're going to get this set up for uh, NSD, of course, to so be sure that you're keeping your eyes peeled for that so you can follow along. I'd encourage you to take this drill as best you can and get back with some buddies. You can do this on a bag. Uh, you can do this on a heavy bag, get it, get it moving a little bit, and you can shift and hit it as it swings in. You can work on some distance. One thing I did see is there was um, people were sort of faking with the push and not really producing much. If I'm doing this with... Uh, possum and I throw this like hook here, really push it, really get some space, get some separation. See how that leg is unweighted, right? It's, it's going to move easy, right? Make sure you get them back. And it doesn't have to be unweighted for this kick to work, but it certainly hurts more if you get that kick in there on the unweighted. It's very common to cover, and somebody's going to cover with their elbow, but go ahead and hit it anyway, right? This side's, you know, push that in and it hits, it's still going to have some effect, potentially going to disrupt the balance of your partner. 